It is uh, such an honor to be here with, um, with Warren today. He, as you know, is one of the best known investors and entrepreneurs of our time. And he's currently the chairman and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated. Um, recently, he made headlines for being bullish on a surprising new investment, women. And that's part of what we're here to talk about today. So he wrote in Fortune last week that we've seen what can be accomplished with 50% of the population. Imagine what can be accomplished with 100%. And we cannot wait to engage in that dialogue here today. We hope that you'll share what you learn on social media and that you'll continue to ask Warren questions here live so that we can make full use of this hour that we have with him. And um, let's get started. Let's do it. Without further ado, okay. let's get started. So, so Warren, it's been a very big week for you. Yeah, we've been busy, yeah. <laughs> so you, you've joined Twitter, you, recent, you recently, you just finished your shareholders meeting, and you recently joined Labo League. I finally came out of my shell. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so my first question to you is, why technology and, and why now? Why opening up this conversation now? Well, I probably should have done it earlier, but uh, actually when I read, well, I've had 40 colleges and universities that come out every year. Uh, I always insist that at least a third of the participants from each school uh, be women. And I get a lot of questions uh, from both men and women about their careers and all sorts of things. Uh, so I had really talked about with these students what I wrote about in Fortune uh, mm -hmm. last week. Uh, but. Uh, I read it, The Galleys of uh, Lean In by Sheryl Sandberg, and, and it, I just wrote down a few ideas that I had. I sent it to her. I thought it might work as a forward for that. Uh, it was things I'd been saying over the years. It didn't work as a forward there, but I decided that you know, it really was time to, to speak out on this. So uh, I sent it into Fortune, and, and they ran it. And, and then the social network type stuff, uh, which, you know, I, I'm, I'm back in the 19th century normally. <laughs> uh, uh, but. It was a means of getting it more broadly distributed, and it, it's, it seems to work very well. Absolutely, and we're thrilled that you're on Twitter and, and joining Levo. So yeah, the, the 20th you. century isn't so bad. Maybe I'll get to the 21st <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> I mean, you know, before we, we get into these questions, just you've really experienced over the course of your lifetime such a transition from, you know, women having one specific role in society and even technology having one specific role in society to where we are today. Do you want to just paint a, paint a picture, give a little bit of color to what the world was like when you were growing up and what it's like today and, and some, of the, some of the things that you've seen change? Yeah, it's really true, uh, Caroline. I, I was born in 1930. I had an older sister, Doris, a few years older, a younger sister, Bertie, a couple years uh, younger. And they're absolutely as smart as I am probably a little smarter and, and uh, much more personable. <laughs> they, they, they got along better in the world and all of that. My parents, our parents, loved us all equally. They never told my sisters, you can't do this or you can't do that, verbally. But every message they got from society, from their teachers in every way, was that their job was to marry well or if they insisted on working, that they could be a secretary or a nurse or a teacher. and, and uh, and essentially, they were telling me, again, silently in many ways, that the sky was the limit. So we would go to school and we'd get similar grades. Uh, they would be very popular. I mean, they had everything going for them, except for the fact that they were women. Right. And here in 1776, we said, you know, these truths are self-evident, you know, that all men are created equal. Well, they must have had their fingers crossed because, <laughs> you know, the Constitution came out. Uh, it was drafted um, 11 years later, and, and it used a whole bunch of uh, male pronouns in Article 2 describing the presidency. And, and we went for decade after decade after decade not using women. And imagine if, if we'd said that all the, all the males under 5 foot 10 could only work in three occupations. It would be crazy, wouldn't it? Right. But it's just as nutty, in my view, <laughs> to say half the population because of their female. I mean, the, the talent is there. But they, they, uh, the society just said, you know, if you want to be a teacher, fine. If you want to be a nurse, fine. If you want to be a, a secretary, fine. But forget everything else. Mm -hmm. So I have seen that change in my lifetime. Although it was, change was slow. I mean, we, you know, we had the we had the Nineteenth Amendment passed in 1920, and as I point out in my article, the next 33 appointments to the Supreme Court were men, and the odds mm -hmm. of that being by chance were eight billion to one. I mean, so now. Part of that was just inertia. Part of it was that attitudes dropped slowly. 
but uh, part of it was the men do not liked it the way it was. Uh, but it has changed a lot for the better. There's, there's still important ways to go, but uh, my business class at Columbia uh, in 1951 had one woman in it, you know, and uh, wow. I mean, it was just, it was a joke. Uh, that, it's, that's changing. But I also said I've seen, I've seen this with males too, but I've seen very, very bright women. I used the example of Catherine Graham, who was yes. outstanding. Uh, while she was CEO of the Washington Post, the stock went up 40 for one. She won a Pulitzer Prize. But she'd been told by her mother, she'd been told by her husband, she'd been told by lots of people that women weren't as good as, as men in business. It was nonsense. And I kept telling her, you know, quit looking at that funhouse mirror. You know, here's a real mirror. You're, you're something. And as smart as she was, as high grade as she was, you know, as, as, as famous as she became, right to her dying day, you know, she had that little voice inside her that kept repeating what her mother told her a long time ago. So everybody should get a chance to live up to their potential. And women should not hold themselves back and nobody should hold them back. And that's my message. <laughs> I love that, and it's so interesting because we recently had an office hours with Sheryl Sandberg, um, as you know, and one of the things that she talked about was this little voice that you're referring to, yeah. and the fact that for whatever reason, women in particular grow up with this voice, and you can call it guilt, you can call it self-doubt, you can call it whatever you yeah. want, but it, it, it exists, and it doesn't really go away, but I think having these conversations about the fact that it is... Um, a distortion of reality, it is part of what contributes to the funhouse mirror, that can at least help us understand that it's that it's societally created and that it's something that we don't have to just accept. Yeah, there, uh, everybody, I mean the potential of humans is, is, we haven't come close to scratching it even, you know, and, 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 and look what's happened since 1776, most of the time using half our talent. I mean just imagine what's going to happen when we you know, go full Literally. blast with 100%. And, and, you know, it's, it's incumbent on everybody to try and help people, uh, particularly if you're in a, a boss's type position, mm -hmm. to help the people achieve their potential. And uh, women have every bit the potential men do. <laughs> can, you, can you talk a little bit more about what, so, so your call to action is extremely powerful, especially given your role as, as a male leader. Can you talk a little bit more about how two types of men can really engage in supporting women in this transition. The first type of male is the leader, right? The CEO of a company, the um, entrepreneur, the person making hiring decisions, the person making board decisions, um, and the person making any sort of personnel related yeah. decision. And the second group I'd be really interested um, in hearing your thoughts on, it. You know, the second group consists of male peers, mm -hmm. right? So, th so the people who are rising in the cohort alongside their you know, yeah. fellow women. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about what your recommendations would be to, to those different types of men and, and how they can really take your essay and as a call to action? Yeah. Well, for the leader, yeah, you, you have to, you know, you, you have to take away the funhouse mirror, and and uh, uh, you have to realize that talent is scarce. And you better take it wherever you can get it. I, right. You know, I, I, it'd be silly. I, well, just go back again to my example with males. I mean, let's just assume that I had some bias against males, five, ten, or less, or something. I wouldn't hire them. I wouldn't. I wouldn't promote them. I mean, that, that's just plain foolish. And and uh, when it comes to boards, I can tell you that that uh, uh, the women we put on our board, uh, they're, they they know business. Uh, they know people, mm -hmm. they know how to make decisions, they understand uh, the ownership, uh, the shareholders or their partners and all. They've got all the qualities we want. At, uh, uh, and I would say to, uh, there was not a lot of malicious intent in overlooking it. It right. just became very natural. I mean, right. it, it, it just wasn't in the consciousness of, uh, of a lot of leaders. I think it's coming along mm -hmm. well on that. Uh, uh, when you get to peers, you always have to wonder whether in a competitive situation you don't. Right. You know, you'd wish you only had to compete with half the people <laughs> instead of 100 percent of the people. I mean, it would. If, if, if I, I'm not sure how I would do if I was a male and I was, I had I had two people to compete with. I could get rid of one of them because she was a woman, <laughs> or one of the guys because he was a redhead or some crazy reason right. like that. But uh, you know, it is it is fun. It's enormous fun for me when I find somebody that starts and really doesn't realize how good they can be. Mm -hmm. Kay was that way. Kay Graham, she really didn't, she kept telling herself that she put limitations on herself. She was a superstar. I mean, when she wrote her autobiography, I mean, 
it was going to win a Pulitzer Prize. Right. And she wrote it. And incidentally, the person that helped her was a woman. <laughs> and uh, it is a marvelous book. But all the time fighting that, that mm -hmm. self-doubt. So I, I think you should encourage anybody, male or female, uh, to reach their potential. I mean, I wouldn't just limit it to females. I mean, it, right. it, it, anybody you can help reach their potential, you know, you've given a gift that's very, very important. That's great. And, and one, one point I'd love to touch on before we um, move on with these questions that are filling my screen right now um, is, can you give our viewers a sense of what the technology landscape looked like when you were growing up? Like, what did you, what did a, a day in the life of Warren Buffett look like in the first 10 years of your career? And then what does it look like today? Well, I got very interested. I, I was lucky. I found out what I, I liked doing when I was very mm -hmm. young. So I got interested in investments. Uh, but the way I learned about investments then uh, was to go to the Alma Public Library. I read every book on investments by the time I was 11. But, uh, yeah. but when I wanted to learn more about specific companies as I became a professional and when I was, after I got out of school, was I would mail away for reports and they would take a week to come, you know, or I mail to the SEC and they'd send me these little microfiche type of copies. Today, or if I write my annual report now, and I want to look up and find out how many justices were appointed at the Supreme Court before, uh, after the, <laughs> the 19th Amendment and before Sandra Day O'Connor, you know, that would, I would have had to go to the library and dig around and everything. I can find it out in about two minutes now. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so having all this information, you know, is, is, is just plain uh, wonderful. Uh, uh, I'm not very good at tech yet, though, so don't give me any quizzes about it. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. We're getting, we're, we're getting there. Uh, you know, you've been, you've been a, in a teaching role and you've been in a student role. And what would you say, this is a question that we were receiving from Carly, what would you say is um, one thing that you feel that the American educational system can do a better job of equipping our young people with? Well, the biggest, I mean, the job of, of teachers is to enable the students to reach their potential. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, a great teacher, we, I've got a program that, I don't know, now for 25 years we, we uh, give awards to students that are nominated as great teachers, 15 of them every year. I mean, a great teacher, uh, it's, it's, it's a gift, you know, and, and uh, uh, in a man for all seasons, uh, uh, somebody comes to Sir Thomas More and says, what should I do? And he said, uh, you should become a teacher. And, uh, and the young man says, why? Uh, nobody will ever know. And, and uh, the fellow says, uh, Sir Thomas More says, uh, no, that's not correct. He says, uh, uh, you're, you'll know, your students will know, and God will know. He said, not a bad audience. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. You know, you, you've really become a proponent of, of you know, female to male and male to female mentorship. And, you know, you're sharing, you share the story about Kay um, that you wrote about um, so eloquently and, and so um, compassionately. And, you know, what advice would you give to young women who are seeking male mentors? And um, what advice would you give um, to, to men who are in positions where they, they would like to help young, young women succeed as mentees? Yeah, well, I, I, um, I never really thought, I mean, these, these relationships all just evolved. I mean, I mm -hmm. didn't set out to become a mentor or anybody, <laughs> and, 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 but I had plenty, you know, that helped me. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it, it's amazing. I, I didn't realize this when I was in school, but it's, it's really amazing how the person that really wants to do a terrific job, you mm -hmm. know, and arrives a little early and does a little extra work, they just jump out. There aren't that many. So, so you will be perceived as exceptional and as a uh, a worthy you know a person for a superior to spend some extra time with if you just do something extra all the time that, right. uh, you know and don't be five minutes late be five minutes early all, all, <laughs> all of this Ben Franklin stuff you know I mean it it seems very elementary right but it's true it's true I mean at uh, I notice well I, I hired a young woman uh, three years ago, we have practically no hire. We don't hire Berkshire. I mean, very rare. And she just jumped out at me to some extent. She ran something called Smart Women's Securities with another woman, and and she clearly, you know, she had the stuff. Mm -hmm. And and at first, I couldn't, I couldn't even figure out a job for her. And then, and right. she, she actually 
came from a farm in Kansas, so she started like, bringing me corn and tomatoes. <laughs> she knew I liked to eat corn. So and, bring your mentor's yeah, snacks. Yeah, she, you gotta just, you gotta in a very nice way sort of push yourself a little bit forward and, and make it, make it clear that, you know, you're worth spending some time with. I mean, right. you, you know, I mean, who should you spend your time with? You want to spend it with, with somebody that's, that's going to get something out of it and, and you want to enjoy it. Uh, uh, so there, there are ways to, to get your hand up, you know, and, and, uh, I, I think actually Cheryl writes that the book. I mean, the, and actually Tracy told me that she went to Harvard Business School. And the women just didn't raise their hand as often as mm -hmm. the men. You know, I, I raised my hand all the time you know, and, right. and when I didn't even deserve to. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and you want to get over the idea, as I wrote the article, you know, the males, there's a lot of Wizard of Oz in us. I mean, you know, you get behind the curtain and you find out that it isn't quite that imposing. <laughs>